Welcome to the SAG After Foundation's Conversations at Home program. I'm Janelle Riley from Variety. Before we're joined by today's guests, I want to let you know that the SAG After Foundation is a nonprofit organization that relies entirely on donations to provide emergency assistance and free educational programs to SAG After artists. This conversation is made possible thanks to the generosity of our supporters. Over the past year, the foundation has given over $6.5 million in COVID relief to more than 7,000 performers. So if you are a SAG after artist and you need help, please ask. And if you can help, please give. Information can be found in the description of this video. Thank you for your support. Now, without further ado, it is my pleasure to introduce the cast of The Voyeurs, Sydney Sweeney, Justice Smith, Ben Hardy, and Natasha Lou Bordizzo. Thank you all so much for being here. Thank you. Good. Thank you for having us. Absolutely. Um, we are speaking to your fellow SAG AFTRA artists. So I actually always like to start by asking, how did you get your SAG card? What was the job that that brought, you know, that magical card to you? And let's start with Sydney. I want to say I did a co-star guest star role on Criminal Minds. It was like one of my first projects. No way. Yeah. Were you a killer or? Oh, I got killed. I usually get killed, so. Oh, you usually get killed. I love that. Uh, Justice, what about for you? I, I think it was a commercial. I, I think it was a commercial for Conagra Foods. <laughs> oh, Conagra. Oh, of course. Of Conagra. Course. Am I saying it wrong? That's, no, you said I, it right. I was oh. fancying it up in my brain. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and and I just was hanging up like I was a kid who was creating like a rooftop uh, screening thing for my neighborhood, and I was hanging up a sheet for the projector to shine against, and that was it. And I smiled and I ate some Orville Redenbacher popcorn, and <laughs> and then I got my sad card. If Conagra is watching this, I love the Orville Redenbacher popcorn. Truly, <laughs> <laughs> Natasha, for you. Um, I don't really remember. I think it was a society, a Netflix show I did. Really? Yeah, I think it was, it was really confusing for a bit there. I was working between like three countries and then finally I've just focused on America now. So I think I might've gotten it late or something, but it was a society, I think. Yeah. And Ben, for you? Mine was the voyeurs. <gasps> Believe it or not. Yeah. Really? No way. Yeah. yeah. No I mean, it's slightly, it's slightly different, I think, because, yeah, I had like a certain number of SAG exempt product uh, projects or something. But yeah, so there you go. Oh, wow. So you will always remember this movie for probably for many reasons, honestly. Sure, sure. <laughs> well, that's one of them for sure. Well, The Voyeurs is it's it's one of those movies where I never saw it was go where it was going. And I'm so curious, how how did the script find its way to you or or was it sides like how did it work? Because I, I think like if I was just reading sides, I wouldn't know what my take on the character would be. So I'd love to hear each of your experiences. And, and let's start with Natasha. Um, I just felt like the script was really unique from all the scripts I'd been reading. And the genre, as we've said, hasn't really been done much lately. It feels like a real revival of it. And it excited me. I couldn't guess anything that happened. So that was why... It caught my attention. So you did get to read the whole script. Were you like, did you think you knew where it was going and then realized you didn't? Um, kind of, because once you read enough scripts, you, you have pretty educated guesses of where mm -hmm. things will end up. But this one, I really did not predict the three or four major plot twists. <laughs> I love that. Ben, what about for you? Um, I was in LA actually, and I was, uh, yeah, I was chilling by the pool, I remember, and I just read the script with no expectations whatsoever. And, um, and yeah, it just it blew me away. It just, I think as Natasha touched upon, you know, just feel like having read a certain number of scripts that you can have an idea of the, of the formula and the structure, and often those boxes are ticked. But um, on this occasion, it was just, could not guess what was happening from one page to the next, um, which was exciting. And, I, yeah, I wanted to be part of it. Justice for you? I was in New York uh, working on a play, I believe. And I remember I remember the exact place that I read it. I was in an Airbnb and I was on a blue couch. And 
um, yeah, I just I started reading it um, kind of non-committally, mm-hmm. and I just got sucked in immediately. And I agreed to do the project after forty pages because I was just so taken by the script. And then after I agreed to do it, that's when I uh, I read the rest. <laughs> <laughs> And I was very happy that <clears throat> I'm getting emotional. No, I was very happy that uh, that I uh, made the right choice. Yeah, Sydney, for you, uh, I read the script while I was in Chicago. It was like right after Euphoria finished, and I think I made it to like page eighty, and I thought that it was done because there was already the one twist. And then I saw that there was like twenty more pages, and I couldn't believe it, and I hadn't read a script that really took me on a ride like this had before. So I I called my agent. I was like, I want to do this. Who's doing it? And then I found out it was Michael. And I worked with Mike on Everything Sucks about three years ago. So I just wanted to just fully dive into it all and and work with the team. I had that experience watching it where I, I thought it had reached the climax. And I was like, wait, there's 20 minutes left. (laughs) <laughs> so I, that's why I was curious about reading it, if it was the same thing. So, um, Sydney, because you'd worked with Michael before, did you have to audition? Uh, no, I don't. I, I just had a phone call with him and he put together this really thoughtful and amazing pick, pitch package for me, actually. And uh, I just I went on board. Well, I I figured you must have had some pull because I heard your grandmothers are in the movie. Yeah, well, they came and visited me (laughs) while I was filming. And I was like, wait, I wonder if they could be extras because I made my Nana an extra and everything sucks before. And it was kind of like my little hidden Easter egg for myself to be able to have that memory. And it kind of, they last forever in a project. And so Mike was kind enough to let them be a part of it. Wow. Did they know what was going on in the story or? They were completely lost. (laughs) It was really funny. Mike had to actually go up to them and tell them to stop searching for the camera in the scene. Oh, that's hilarious. I'm going to look for them then. I think I know which scene they're in. Yeah. (laughs) Um, For the rest of you, I'm sort of curious, um, you know, was it, was there any sort of an audition process? Uh, actors feel, because you're talking to your fellow actors here, I know some of them like really don't like the process. Some of them like it. They see it as an experience to get to play with the material. But, you know, did you, you probably at least wanted to talk to Michael, you know, before taking your role. Natasha, you're yeah. nodding, so I'm going to pick on you. <laughs> um, I... Yeah, so I sent in a reading of a scene. I think I think Mike at the time had just asked me. To do it. And um, I actually did it in an American accent um, because that's how I usually work. And he, I think we had a, this is like so long ago, I'm trying to remember. Um, I think we FaceTimed after that tape and he was like, I loved, I loved your tape and I love your natural speaking voice. So we went with that. And cool. I think it, it differentiated the characters more because Sydney and Justice are like the Americans who've moved to Montreal. And then Ben and I are like the mysterious foreigners kind of thing. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Have you ever gotten to use your natural voice in a film before? Never. Never. Wow. Oh. Was that freeing? It was freeing. I think it was like it allowed me to have more color to my voice and and it there's like always 10 percent of you that's thinking about the accent you're doing so yeah yeah that didn't happen then for you um i didn't actually audition for this one i met with i met with mike um uh and yeah i mean i just had a great meeting with him and he just amazed me really because i didn't know the meeting was happening until a couple of days before and then when i got there he seemed to like watched everything i'd ever been in and i was like (laughs) like abstract like little british things that that you know would not have necessarily come on one's radar or any american's radar or any human's radar so yeah i was like wow and he was like well yeah i'm prepping for this meeting so i've you know done my research and i was like man i should have watched more than three episodes of everything sucks but uh but anyway (laughs) uh but i did enjoy it but no it was uh, it was great. But to your point about the audition process in general, I think that's something like even now I'm still like wrestling with to try and make it 
to try and get something from it for myself to try and explore and find new characters and try out different things and make it not just about serving the potential job and the potential enjoyment and the potential fun that could be had and the potential creative fulfillment, but also to actually try and get something from the process itself. Um, yeah, still working on it. I'll let you know if, if, I, if I figure out how. <laughs> well, it's, I mean, I don't know a better way to do it, but it is a strange process. Yeah, completely. Because you're not you're not doing it as you would be if you're actually on the job. It's very strange and different. And sometimes you get action heavy scenes or whatever, and you're half miming bits and all that kind of stuff. You know, it's a different beast of its own, isn't it? So it can be quite frustrating at times. But obviously, it's a necessary thing to to get to do what we love. Yeah, I actually enjoy the audition process. I you enjoy asking to send tapes because I and I, and I don't know if they like it or not, but if it's a scene in a car, I'll literally go down to my car and film it in the car. That's cool. I, I fully get into it because it is such an unnatural, strange thing to be doing. So I try to make it as fun as possible. And justice for you? Um, yeah, again, I met with Michael. I didn't audition, but I think I was one of the first actors that Michael met with. Like it was pretty early on in, in the process. Um, and, uh, I, I had seen everything sucks. I think I had seen everything sucks on a whim, like not even in research of Michael, but just like on my own. And I loved that show. And I remember noting how amazing Sydney was in the show. And then, um, but there was, there was no talks of, uh, Sydney at that point. Um, but then, later down the line when Michael was like, oh, Sydney, Sweeney, I was like, she's so good. I saw her in this and <laughs> she's so good in Euphoria and all this kind of stuff. And so I was really excited to work with her. But um, yeah, I was a fan of Michael's from Everything Sucks. And then and then after we met, I, I watched uh, his film Pink Grapefruit and um, his short film Pink Grapefruit. And, and I was like also blown away. Um, uh, yeah, and he just has this energy about him that's just so uh, welcoming and warm, and um, but also uh, like he has such a strong vision about what he wants at the same time, but he's not uh, trying to impose that onto on onto you. Like he's he's very interested in what you have to bring into the character, and uh, um, he just kind of he came at me from a very collaborative uh, perspective and. Uh, and I always appreciate that in a director. It's interesting. I was, I was actually going to ask if you knew uh, Sydney because, you know, so much of this movie, we, we have to invest in, invest in this relationship between Pippa and Thomas. And you have such great chemistry. And I was kind of curious how you built that chemistry because you, you do feel like a couple who's been together for a while. You know, there's sort of that easy rapport. It's Did you only meet when you got to set? Yeah. yeah. We just hit it off. I mean, I always say there, I did not know that Pippa was going to have such a goofy side to her until I met Justice. And we started going through all the scenes and it just came out. And I, I loved it because it's such a different dynamic between this couple and Ben and Natasha's couple. Yeah. I, yes, I was going to ask the same of Ben and Natasha because uh, uh, you, you're a slightly more dysfunctional couple, I would say, but you still have to, you know, understand why these two people are together, especially, you know, they're as they're being watched in bits and pieces of their lives. Um, what was it like for you to, you know, sort of be thrown together and say, you know, you're a couple? Uh, are you gesturing to me to answer? Uh, it was yeah. I think you. I think we clicked quite uh, quickly, wouldn't you say, Tash? I'd say I think so. so. Maybe the British Aussie connection than the non American connection. Yeah. Yeah, uh, and we had some rehearsals beforehand uh, for stunts, especially, didn't we? And so we had a bit yeah, of time beforehand yeah. to kind yeah. of uh, build some some chemistry and whatnot. Um, that the spoilers, like the scene. I don't even know. No, it's not a spoiler. Um, after the Halloween party where they can finally hear us is a really <laughs> defining moment of what the dynamic of, or what you may think the dynamic of that couple is. Um, that's like the thread that follows until things change. 
Mm-hmm. I'm so bad about spoilers. Are you saying that we re- rehearsed rehearsed that? You mean in this? No, time? I just mean like that. That I think that's <clears throat> that scene gave it. It showed what the dynamic of why we were together was. Yeah. Um, for me. Right. Yeah. Yeah. The characters, not us. Not us. The characters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't think there's anything that's us. <laughs> No, no. I'm glad to hear that. Yeah, we, yeah, we were singing, well, I was singing Ariana Grande half the time, and you were singing yes, Frank Ocean. Was it was all very cute, cute, see our, uh, uh, our off screen relationship. Yeah. Yes. Guys was so cute. Justin and I just like slept. <laughs> we just followed. Yes. <laughs> yeah. We just found different places on the set to sleep. <laughs> There's a series of photos of Justice and I just weirdly laying like corpses in the most random spots together. <laughs> 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 I'm, not a I'm not a napper so that wouldn't have been me mm. actually the the dynamic between natasha and sydney's character is also really really interesting and fraught um you don't have to pretend like you know each other so there's a difference but it's it was great to see your scenes together i really enjoyed those yeah i think i it, it was about finessing what i felt like my performance or our dynamic had to be to not give away what happens. Mm -hmm. So it was really focusing on the energy in the earlier scenes, um, not at all projecting what we knew was coming kind of thing, which I think the scene in the spa and everything leading up to us forming a friendship um, has that organic quality about it of just like kind of shy and awkward, like getting to know someone, trying to make a friend. So it worked well. Yeah, I, I remember there was a lot of play of wanting to make sure we were not giving anything away in those scenes. Mm-hmm. It was like a fine line. Also, the spa was just beautiful. It was yeah. so beautiful. Uh, forgive me for not knowing, did you shoot this before or, or after lockdown? Right before. Oh, wow. Okay. Because um, I was thinking like it, it actually might have been the perfect lockdown movie because it's really a tight core of four characters, but but you made it in under the wire. I love that. Um, was there anything else you did special to prepare for your roles? I mean, there's so much going on under the surface and so much psychologically. Plus, Sydney Pippa, it like you know works at a for an eye doctor, which I just find fascinating. It looked like you really knew what you were doing. I try to do as much research as I could, but I'm so squeamish when it comes to anything related to doctors and needles or anything like that so I had the hardest time watching videos or doing eye drops I, I, I couldn't but I try I tried to learn everything I could especially for the eye exam I wanted to know what the machine the different numbers all meant I had an eye exam the, the day that I saw this movie actually which was maybe not the best idea <laughs> <laughs> what about for the rest of you is there any sort of you know special preparation you had to do uh, oh you get you get nope go ahead no, you good. No, I was gonna make something up, but you you probably have something real. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Just all right. I I used it as an excuse to to buy a fancy camera, basically, just because I was like, one day I'll get a nice camera, and that'll make me get into photography. And then I tried to get into photography, and uh, yeah, and took a few pictures here and there, but um, and then never sent nothing's them. gonna be in an exhibition anytime soon. We took some pictures, didn't we, Tash? And you never sent them. I'm still. I never. Oh yeah, I still need to send them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, yeah, and I think I drove Mike nuts in rehearsal as well because I'd be taking pictures of him because he's got like these steely blue eyes, and I was like, Mike, yeah, look here, look here. <laughs> and he's like, I'm trying to direct the flipping movie here, Ben. Uh, yeah, yeah. We didn't say that. I could just read it in those big steely blue eyes of his. Yeah. I wonder because you looked really at home with a camera. I mean, I, I played around with it, but uh, yeah, I, I'm not, you know, I know how to work one, but yeah, I'm not Annie Leibovitz. Yeah. Just did you, Justice, did you think up a made up answer yet? Yes. Um, I picked up the bass briefly because I have to play it ever so briefly in the movie, but I had never played before. Um, so I just wanted to look like I knew what I was doing. I was quite bad at it, but um, I also was bad at the guitar. So. In the movie, I'm bad at two things. <laughs> no, but um, also, also, I I speak French, and uh, I I was just practicing my French a lot too because I because the film takes place in Montreal, and so I was trying to make sure that it sounded uh, not. You fooled me. I thought you knew what you were doing with the bass. Oh well, thank you. I appreciate that. 
<laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> Natasha, for you? Um, I think a big part of it was, as I was mentioning the accent stuff, just because I never work in my natural accent, it was a really different um, approach. It felt very vulnerable for the first half of the film. Um, when she's getting to know Sydney's character, I really, I was kind of myself in some ways, in some of those scenes, in a way that I haven't been, um, that surprised me. But aside from that, I just kind of channeled some of, maybe I've done some fashion work where I could relate to the things that Julia or Margot was talking about. So I channeled that energy. All were under the assumption that Natasha was a model. I, know, I, I thought was Natasha say, was a yeah. model. Yeah. All of us, she was a model. Yeah. It's true. Fool them. It's a great lie. It was excellent hustle there, Tash. I respect, <laughs> it. I respect I don't it. know. I don't know how this happened. Like, it happens in art. It's not the worst problem to have, but in every article, it's always like model turned actress. And I'm like, I have yes. never been a model. Really? I was literally a student turned actress. Thank you very much. That's so <laughs> interesting. <laughs> I guess it is meant as a compliment, though, I, I suppose. Yeah, but I just don't know where it came from. I, yeah, I don't know. But Mike fully went with it. And so I just let him. <laughs> he really did. <laughs> I was just like, you know what? Go for it. Um, you're shooting on location and, and you're dealing with, you know, some really challenging material. These characters really go through a lot emotionally. Um, trying to be as spoiler free as possible, but... For each of you, what was sort of the biggest challenge of playing this role? And, and, and were you able to disconnect from it at the end of the day? Or are you someone who takes your work home with you? And let's start with Justice. Um, I'm not, so, well, it depends on the project, but I've learned to create boundaries between me and the story, me and the character, because I, I think it's negligent to believe that um, if you spend all day in a, in a state of anxiety or, or, uh, or tension in the scenes and then you go home, like your body is not as smart as you think. And so it's going to still have re residual anxiety and tension. And so there's like, uh, you know, decom decompressing uh, or like a cathartic exercises that you need to do to kind of get that out of that, get that energy out of your system. Um, with this one, it was a li little easier um, because uh, Montreal has many different uh, places to decompress. <laughs> Bota Bota, shout out to Bota Bota, the spa. <laughs> What'd you say? I hope it's still open. Who knows? I, like yeah, I hope so too. Um, but uh yeah, for the most part, I was able to to have boundaries with the character, and and uh, um, but the but the most difficult thing, or or rather, the thing that really drew me to the project was kind of Thomas representing this idea of of um, not being enough, because I feel like that's something that uh, we deal with as a society, you know, where like we're constantly comparing ourselves to the people across the way, aka like the people on our social media um or our friends or our family and uh and we're told that we're not enough or we feel like we're not enough and uh and uh we try to like you know feign some semblance of control over that but um really it's like an internal thing that we're struggling with and so that i felt thomas i felt like was the personification of that of like of like just insecurity incarnate yeah which is interesting to me because I find him to be the most enough character in the, in the movie, if that makes right. sense. Right. <laughs> Natasha, for you? Um, yeah, I definitely am the same. I completely agree with Justice. I don't think it's beneficial for me personally to, to think that if I have a really emotional scene to stay really like down and anxious the entire day, it just saps me my energy. And then by the time I actually get to perform, I have nothing left to give. So um, I really learned as well because I did a movie called Hotel Mumbai that was about the terrorist attacks in Mumbai at the time and um, my body just remembered the stress that I pretended to be in all day and I couldn't even sleep so I remembered that as a real lesson to set boundaries yeah and Ben for you um, I, I suppose for me you know when no matter who you're playing you have to every for my for me anyway I have to be able to 
relate to them or see some kind of, uh, not necessarily see myself, but just understand the way they're thinking and not necessarily agree with it. But because her, because Seb has quite a uh, heinous way of thinking, perhaps, some, in a way, I don't know. See, even now I'm, in, I'm, I'm conflicted. But like I have to, or, you know, the challenge for me was to come up with a logic, no matter how twisted, there was still a logic that I could, whether I believed it or not, I could at least like myself thinking it and playing it, if that makes sense. Yeah. So that was, and then, but then to revert that and not take that home. I, I like to, I like to meditate at the end of the day after filming. It feels like a little, like, like bookmark, you know, end of the end of the day. Right. Okay. Right. Yes. Right, yeah. 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 Um, um, quiet in the mind. And then, yeah. And Sydney for you. Sydney. <laughs> Uh, I I definitely separate myself from the characters as much as possible. I I create my characters so that they're their own living, breathing human being, and so I'm able to just jump in and out of their shoes. I mean, you play a, quite a few tortured characters now that I think about it. <laughs> you need to sign up for a nice rom com next. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You know, it's my my parents say that when I was younger, someone pulled them aside on set and they asked if something like terrible happens in my childhood or something like that. But no, I had a good one. <laughs> uh, again, I think that that was meant as a compliment that you're really good at what you do. Oh. I think. I hope. <laughs> that's a, that's funny i'm sorry um well again it is such a i know it sounds like a strange word to use but it's a really fun movie i really enjoyed watching where it went um and on behalf of the sag after foundation i just want to thank you so much for being here today sharing your experiences with your fellow performers thank you so much thank, oh, thank you. you thank you